everyone, welcome back. Today's video, I was upstairs actually and it just kind of came to me. I was upstairs, I was taking care of all the household bills. It's a fact of life, all of us, we have bills to pay. And one of the bills in particular was my home electric bill. And that made me start to think, you know, what are we paying for all these different things? What does it cost for this? What does it cost for that? And I thought that would make a great video for you guys if we could break down every little cost in regards to what it actually costs for electrical costs to run a big home aquarium. So I thought today we're going to take care of that. We're going to break down what it costs for a heater, for some lights, and give you guys the tools that you can go and look at your home bill and find out exactly what it costs for you to run your one fish tank or your whole fish room. So let's get to it. So really, honestly, whether you have one tank, you have 10 tanks, or you have a 1,000 tanks, it really isn't going to matter. You're going to want to have a clue as to what it actually costs you, electrical consumption-wise, for running these whole things. And you know, then you can make decisions as to what's more important for you, one big display tanker or a whole fish room of tanks. You know, Maybe there's methods and ways and means that we could look at that'll make certain things a little bit more cost-efficient. Maybe there's cheaper filters to run or, or better types of lighting options or different ways of heating your room. Those sort of things let's take a quick peek at some electrical items now you guys know i don't keep just fish i've got fish i've got isopods we've got tarantulas and vivariums we got all sorts of things and most of these animals are going to require power in one way or another you obviously see that each one of the tarantula enclosures is using lighting the geckos have heat you know so we're looking at this you know we'll just use this tank as an example this tank is a 160 gallon tank. It's the Amazon tank. The piranhas are all shy right now because we're all of a sudden I'm in the room doing a bunch of stuff. But this tank is running two large lights on top of it. So we could talk about that. It's running a trickle filter, which means it's running a large pump. And the pump is down there in the back corner in that bulkhead. And then it's also got heaters and stuff to maintain the correct temperature. Each one of those is requiring power. We'll go to the other side and we look at maybe the Congo tank some stuff in the way obviously but the Congo tank is essentially running the exact same way it's got a little LED light strip up top here and we'll talk about LED in a bit it's running a pump in the back and it's also got its heaters in the overflow as well and each one of those is running the same way this one also happens to be running a canister filter getting it ready for the other thing so maybe we should take a peek and actually start looking at some of the individual items and break down the cost for them now, my electrical bill, it says Manitoba Hydro. Manitoba derives all of its, uh, all of its energy costs or all of its uh, electrical from uh, rivers, from dams. So it's all done. That's why they use the term hydro. But what we really want to start looking at is on your electric bill, the first thing you want to try and find, granted this is from November's bill, but you want to find where, what it costs for a kilowatt hour. And that's how Manitoba charges everything based on kilowatt hours. So for me, this November bill, we're going into winter time, Wintertime for us means heating all the animals outside, the, the cattle troughs and stuff. So I'm going to use a lot more energy consumption in the winter than I ever would in the summer. But if you can see here, I use 5,000 kilowatt hours and I pay 0.08983 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, how do we break that all down? Let's take a peek. A kilowatt hour is a unit of energy equal to one kilowatt of power sustained for one hour. Now, a kilowatt is different from watts, and it takes a thousand watts to equal one kilowatt. And with every electrical appliance we're going to be using in our fish rooms or terrariums, they're all measured in watts. For example, we buy an aquarium heater based on the wattage and how many watts we need to heat per gallon based on size of the aquarium. Every single electrical appliance will have a wattage, and it'll basically the wattage is the amount of draw that that item uses of electricity. And as you see here, every single one of these items will have that wattage carefully denoted on the item. 150 watt for both these heaters, or in the case of this fan, I believe it's a high door fan. Now sometimes they might only be on the package, but this is a, a fairly rare worn. This one takes 18 watts of power. So it's a very low wattage appliance. Different appliances have a different level of draw or use more power. Now, for example, 
If we're going to be talking about such appliances such as an aquarium filter, an aquarium filter generally is going to be running 24-7. The only time it would ever be off would when we would be doing maintenance on said filter. Or if you're running a large air pump to run an entire fish room, that is going to be running 24-7. Same thing. But when it comes to things like a heater or lighting, lighting first, lighting is often used on a kind of a set schedule of time. If you're running a planted aquarium, you're more than likely going to have that set up on a timer and then it'll have a certain level of time that a duration that those lights will be on. So you'll only be using the draw during those hours. When it comes to something like a heater, there's a little bit of guesswork involved. How often is that heater going to be kicking on is a bit of a guesswork because how, what's the ambient temperature of your home? Do you have your tanks in your basement? It's a little bit cooler. How insulated is the room? A lot of factors we have to take into play. So we're just going to do a little bit of guesswork. So let's take a peek at the math. So let's start. Let's start with lighting. Lighting has changed leaps and bounds in the years that I've been an aquarist. We used to start off with incandescent bulbs, and then we came into fluorescent tubes, which were the T12 style. They were a big, thick, inch and a half diameter tube, but they very, weren't very energy efficient. They generally ran around 34 to 40 watts per four foot tube. And you start adding up, you put two tubes on a tank, four tubes on a tank, you have four or five tanks, all of a sudden that wattage starts adding up. But nowadays, with energy costs getting higher and higher, we started wanting to become more and more efficient. So they migrate from T12s down to T8s and now more the standard is T5 and T5s were introduced in the early 2000s. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that there's generally all lower wattage because you can get high output light bulbs like these here and these high out light bulbs or these T5s are much higher wattage but these are often used to get that intense floral growth. Now, as you can see, we've gone from two tubes, four tubes, different types of fixtures. This one in the middle actually also has two little cooling fans, so it would actually have a slightly higher draw as well above the two tubes, and then different configurations of the different LEDs, which seem to be more the norm. And LED bulbs now, you can get them down into that 13, 18 watt range, which makes them a lot more energy efficient, well, less than half of what the original T12s were. So as a comparison, let's look at it. Two T12 bulbs, say 40 watts each, times two, times eight hours a day, times 30 days a month on average, is 19,200 total used wattages. And then we divide that by a thousand, that gives us 19.2 kilowatts. Now if we use that same example, different LED units and stuff down in the 18 watt range, we're looking at 18 watts times two, times eight, times 30 days, is 8,640, or 8.6 kilowatts. So again, less than half of the original. And many can be even more efficient. Now if we look at those models, the T12 bulb times the 0 0.08983, my charge on my monthly statement of what I pay per kilowatt hour, that works out to that T12 bulb, uh, two T12 bulbs will cost about $2 a month, or $24 a year versus those LED conversion bulbs works out to exactly half that. Now let's switch gears and let's look at something like a filter, a very commonly used filter. And for our examples today, we'll use the AquaClear 110. This very popular line of filters is popular for many reasons, one of which is that they're extremely energy efficient. You'll notice that the AquaClear 110 uses 14 watts. That's pretty good. But if we do the math, 14 watts, this filter's running 24-7, so times 24 hours, times 30 days on average, that gives us a total of 10,080 watts. Now if we divide that by 1,000, that gives us 10.08 kilowatts. That works out to 90 cents a month. So to run this in this filter 24-7, it's only going to cost us 90 cents a month, or just shy of $11 for a year. So I think you guys are getting the kind of the general idea so you can pull out your own electric bill, figure out what you're paying for kilowatt hours, and then do the math the same sort of system. Now, as I mentioned, when you're talking about things like heaters, you got to take a lot more things into account. So maybe just do kind of a variable. Is your heater on all the time? No. Is it on half the time? Probably not. 
but maybe a third of the time and just get yourself kind of an average cost so you really know truly how much it costs for you to run your home aquarium or your fish room. Now, if you're running a large fish room with lots and lots and lots of tanks, you've probably already figured it out. This is insanely expensive, and you've probably made some adaptions. Instead of maybe heating each individual tank, maybe you've got a space room heater and a well-insulated space for all your aquariums, and you're heating them all to the same temperature. That's a good way, of cost-effective way of making it a little bit cheaper. Maybe you're instead of filtering each individual tank with a hang on the back or a canister or a big trickle filter with pumps, you know, maybe you've gone and used a central air system, which are generally low voltage, and uh, using things like sponge filters. All work very, very well. So regardless of what your situation is, energy costs are constantly going up. We've got to find ways and means to be a bit more energy efficient. And thankfully, you guys don't have to heat one of these throughout the entire winter when we regularly go down colder than the surface of Mars. And uh, this is a 15 watt submersible heater and it runs, I'm not saying it runs 24-7, it's thermostatically controlled, but this thing costs us about $80 to $90 a month to run. Granted, you know, up here in Canada, that's only like six to eight months of the year. <laughs> but regardless, it's still a cost, and it's a cost of living where we live. So, hope you guys found that useful a little bit. I thank you guys for your time, as always. And until next video, guys, take care. See you later.